you don't shoot him. He is on the ground. What's going on? I'm on the ground. I'm on the ground. I'm on the ground. Why are you attacking me? Why are you attacking me, sir? What the hell did I do? Roll over. Put your hands behind your back. Roll, put your hands behind your back. Man, put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. That manhunt came to an end right inside this Dollar General in Newdale. I talked to the store manager about what her staff witnessed on a work day, unlike any other. Video from News 13 viewer John Kirkman captures the moment a manhunt ended inside a Yancey County store. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! And it just all ended here at Dollar General. Stephanie Austin is the store manager and says her workers were inside as cops swarmed the store. The video shows two people face down on the ground and law enforcement with guns drawn. They come in as uh, shoppers and they tried to purchase a phone and the next thing we know the law come in and it just proceeded from there. According to the Yancey County Sheriff's Office, this all started with the reported domestic situation in a vehicle in Mitchell County. A chase there spilled into Yancey County. It's just amazing that we live in such a small community and all this stuff is happening. 32 year old Nathaniel James Effler of Johnson City, Tennessee, now facing a list of charges, including felony reckless driving to endanger and assault on a law enforcement officer with a firearm after the sheriff's office says Effler grabbed a deputy's gun before being tased. His bond is now set at one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. During that chase, deputies were forced to back off because of school traffic and the suspect driving on the wrong side of the road. I've also learned from deputies that at one point, the suspect ditched his vehicle before eventually hitching a ride to this Dollar General where he was arrested. A week after the city of Asheville shut down a large homeless camp, News 13 obtains reports that show serious crimes there. News 13's Kimberly King joins us live outside the police department. Kim, there are also records of violence at other homeless camps. Holly, that's right. We've learned of two camps in Asheville that police are currently monitoring. One of them had a report of a stabbing that's contained in this report just days ago at White Fawn Drive off Biltmore Avenue. But I've also confirmed that top brass here at APD are talking with leaders inside City Hall to come up with a specific plan on how to supervise more closely public safety in these camps. This is a snapshot of incidents that have occurred across the city in the last year. APD Captain Michael Lamb showed us the criminal records. These are incidents where anywhere in the incident narrative, a camp or a tent was referenced as far as being where the crime occurred. 14 reports show cases of kidnapping and rape, assaults, and at least four overdoses at or around the I-240 camp shut down days ago. Over the past year, these 17 additional crime reports at homeless camps across the city show the range of violent crime. On a scale of 1 to 10, we asked Lamb his level of concern. I would say an, an 8 because um, there are definite health and safety concerns within within especially large encampments. 
Lamb says he and the police chief are talking with city leaders to formulate a clearer approach to decisions regarding closing camps. Some cases for him stand out. The sexual assaults, the rapes, serious violent crime where it involves a weapon. One, he said, involved a shotgun. There's another that involves an axe. Another, a machete. Some stabbings. Lamb reports two additional homeless camps are now being monitored. One of them big concerns was an encampment that was right behind Asheville Middle School and because staff and our school resource officer were finding needles on school grounds. The captain says there are talks to create a new homeless camp response team to go instead of police. Some type of resource team that would respond to the encampments to offer resources including help for drug addiction. The plan is in the early stage. Now with you know everyone having staffing issues um, just all across the nation, it's hard to say how quickly it will come into fruition. And experts that I have been speaking to tell me that drug addiction perpetuates the homelessness cycle, particularly in these homeless camps. But as one homeless woman that I spoke to recently in Asheville named Panda told me, you have to want to get clean. And she says taking that step can often be a very difficult one to take. Supply chain disruptions and shipping delays forced many holiday shoppers to change behaviors this year. Some consumers went to websites they may not typically shop in search of those must-have gifts. Investigative reporter Jennifer Emmert finds that opens up your gift giving to counterfeit products. She shows us how to spot imposters and Grinch proof your gift list. The Government Accountability Office found 20 of 47 name brand products sold by third party vendors on five popular websites were fakes, and that was three years ago. Add in this year's supply chain disruptions, and experts say it could put your online gift purchase at greater risk. We have four grandkids. And uh, so we, we try to make it a nice Christmas for them. But shipping delays are threatening to undo the holiday cheer Mary Beth Lovelace has worked hard to deliver. Uh, have ordered some things online and they haven't arrived yet. Sending Mary Beth to Hendersonville's Main Street. I'm out doing some last minute shopping so they'll have something to open up. Items in hand, she can see their quality. But I really prefer getting out and touching everything and seeing people and all that. A luxury expert say buying online doesn't provide with fake items flooding the market. Are you seeing more counterfeits exist out there or frauds in the market because of some of the supply chain issues? We think we are. I mean, we think we're very good at uh, interdicting some of this stuff and some states have nobody doing this kind of thing. Secretary of State Elaine Marshall's table is overflowing with proof from bogus Apple chargers to knock off Nikes. You would think maybe with the supply chain issues, some of this is slowed up at all. That hasn't been the case, has it? Well, no, it hasn't, and I'm not sure it hasn't driven up uh, the, the, the counterfeit need, demand, because if you can't get the real thing because of supply chain, um, these folks will put together anything in a heartbeat. Take a closer look. This pinkish packaging for off-brand earbuds may not raise suspicions. This might have caused caught their attention. Inside counterfeit Apple AirPods that take a trained eye to expose the imposter. When you look at some together, you can see that the printing is not that good and it's smaller. Gamers may have been gamed by this popular Nintendo product. This being made by Nintendo has 30 games already preloaded on it. This one claims to have a whopping 620 games on it and is for about half the price of what the Nintendo is that has 30 on it. And sports fans may not be cheering for these counterfeits. Lots of times on apparel, you can see poor stitching, where the sewing machine went from letter to letter to letter and a string is there. North Carolina's Secretary of State says sometimes imposters are obvious. If you look at this face mask, uh, it is, if somebody's familiar, this is a Louis Vuitton type fabric. Well, Louis Vuitton does not sell products that are sold in gas stations. How can you tell the fakes from genuine products? Here are some tip-offs. Misspellings and grammar mistakes on labels and packaging. An unusually low price should raise suspicions. And if brand-specific markings seem off, reconsider. There actually are some um, third-party validators online uh, where you can go and put in a stock number and it'll come up uh, that it is a real one or come up that um, they'll give you some message that this is a fake. If you're asking why does it matter? When you buy these things you're taking money away from everybody in that whole supply chain. 
uh, and it goes from um, taxes at the local level, it goes to the manufacturers, it goes to the trucking company, the retail people, the folks that work retail. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an impact on everybody's bottom line. Sometimes with dangerous consequences. There, there have been reports of somebody who was uh, shocked, electrocuted uh, with a fake, um, what would be an Apple charging square. Consumer Reports is calling on Congress to pass the Informed Consumers Act. It holds e-commerce accountable for preventing counterfeit items from being sold by third-party vendors. You can find more on reporting counterfeits at WLOS.com.